Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. I wanted to do a live stream and generate some conversation in regards to PZO speakers, uh, especially the PZO treble speaker. What's going on, Dave, in the house? Uh huh. PZO electric speaker treble speakers pick it up wireless wireless hey justin mr alderidge what's up osabi happy friday tgif let's get a few more peeps on and we'll start off by sending an electromagnetic wave in the air Hello, Angel. We got Angel in the house. Adam, we got Adam in the house. Yes, Adam, you're going to love this. We're going to be doing an experiment with a Pizio electric treble speaker. What's going on, Jason, in the house? I know, Adam. I'll, I'll uh, give you a call later or tomorrow or over the weekend. Just want to say uh, uh, happy Father's Day for everybody who's a father coming up in a, a few days. And let's start off with, I got some reason seems like I got more people on than the number on the phone is, but let's go over the setup. All right, so the driver is this 2N3055. I got a diode in the middle, and I got the negative side heading towards the base. I got the positive side heading towards the emitter. All right, I got a, um, an AC neon light bulb in between the emitter and the uh, collector. And that's there to tell me if I disconnect um, the charging battery, that light will light up to let me know that um, there's too much going on in the system that um, it's good chance I'm gonna burn it out. So uh, if you guys would like me to make a video and write out the schematics on this driver here uh, just leave a comment and if I don't catch it on the comment you're leaving now just um, somehow let me know and I will be happy to build one right in front of you step by step I'll make a list of all the parts and uh, we'll go from there here we have a digital speedometer running off a magnetic relay so that magnetic relay the magnetic sensor my bad this is a sensor to the digital rpm so when this turns um, that will show the speed so we have we have something to record the speed so we can see if we're putting the drag on it if the speed drops we can also um, go over to this now as a potentiometer and it's a 1k with a 100 ohm resistor on there that resistor is tied to the light bulb over here, which is right here, the light bulb. All right, and that light bulb right there is called a, a grain of wheat light bulb. Uh, it's a DC 12 volt light bulb. So when that's on, that'll tell me that there's current going into the, um, into the base and that it will be the switching voltage right there and that that light bulb so when i uh when i turn the potentiometer that light goes brighter or dimmer so um when it's dimmer we have the potentiometer all the way to the far left which is at its lowest and as we go right the light gets brighter and the speed increases will show on the RPMs, and uh, that's because of the coil is getting more power. 
I am running two marine batteries. And over here, we are sitting on eight one inch square. Eight of them. So the frequency is up higher. And that just made me think of something is that I have my speakers right here. Yes, you can use a, 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 a Rio stat. Well, hmm. yes, it is resistance. Yes, you can. You can also use a DC motor controller as well. Over here, I got some speakers, and the speakers are hooked up to coils. So we are going to listen. The, the fascinating thing is this, guys. Um, this PZO treble speaker. Well, we're gonna. Hopefully, you guys are gonna be able to hear this, but we can walk around the room if I put an antenna on it, and we will hear sound coming through here, faint. But the vibration hits the piezo crystal that's in here, and the vibration occurs into the speaker and the magnet here, and it vibrates off the frequency. So when I change the potentiometer, our frequency will get greater and our, our um, frequency will get higher. Here, um, this is just a touch of what I want to really get into because the sound part of Edley Scallon to me uh, is right around the corner to where we start looking at the bottles that he has on the wall and in regards to uh, connecting to the ground, connecting to a capacitor. Obviously, the variable capacitors he has um, up on the wall uh, will help us tune the bottles to the Schumann resonance in the ground and the air. And once we uh, accomplish that tuning, it'll be done through sound. So this is the start of me bringing incorporating sound into um, one the pitch and the sound that's in um, a couple things in the different wiring we can do we can do um, I gotta do an experiment now I have different windings on here is a bi filer you're welcome Justin I know you've been on me it, everything has its right moments and on this bi filer, there's a, thick, a thicker wire and a thinner wire. And we're going to um, connect the connections right now are connected to the thick wire. And uh, we'll listen to the sound that comes out of the speaker. Then we'll go into the thinner wire and we'll listen to the sound. And I, I really didn't prep for this. I just got home and basically um, just decided to i got the magnets on here this morning before i left started yesterday and i just set this up like within um, the last hour so i figure i at least get the wheel showing you guys that th there's a lot going on here and on top of that I, i'm not I, I can't do the experiment right now because i have to tie this down somewhere but what i want to do is do some experiments with ed's pmh and right now the magnets will stick to it. I can't even pull them off. But I like to take this and slide it into and let the magnets go through the center. And um, what I like to do is Ed talks about his PMH with 1,500 turns. Now listen to me. I think there's more to that. I think that that is the frequency. Um, somehow ties in I, I i just i don't know i'm gonna have to learn more about this and the frequency is low i mean we're, we're talking about adam you know this we talked about it all the time 7.8 on up to like 23.8 and then 
even when there's like the summer solstice and the winter solstice, uh, it fluctuates. It goes up to past 40. It's been recorded recently, too, from the, from the winter, the spring equinox. So it, 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 it desperately went up. So I, I don't know. I'm going to have to learn. I'm going to have to actually get more into the wire, which I did learn a lot about the Tesla, you know, stuff. And, and when you get into the Tesla stuff, um, uh, uh, talk about Tesla stuff. I just want to right now uh, say uh, I got a notice today, or not a notice, but a video from Abrams Lab. If you guys ever watched Abrams Lab, he um, was the best, one of the one of the best Tesla coil makers, and uh, he uh, did a video today. He's no longer. He's killing the channel. So all I want to say to his channel, rest in peace. Can we get a moment of silence? Okay, that's a moment of silence for my buddy Abrams Lab. Ryan, no longer doing YouTube channels anymore. And if you guys go to his, go to his channel, see his la the reason why he's not doing it, and hopefully he changes his mind because um, you do it for enjoyment. And if you don't expect anything out of it, it's not as bad as he says. So, uh, all right. So back to sound. Uh, Tesla coil. Um, Ryan's lab. So I've learned a lot about frequencies. I learned about alert a lot about um, um, Wrapping coils uh, how many turns? Uh, frequencies for how many turns uh, thicknesses of wire and how many turns and the uh, uh, Sound to the thinner wire and a lot of turns the pitch goes up and so we're talking really, really high pitch sound, and I um, want to kind of think that um, the Schumann resonance uh, wave that is traveling like a wave, and it's going by your screen right now, we just don't see it, that that wave um, has a sound base to it. And that sound base is um, what I'm going to try to tap into because I believe that's what Ed was all about was sound. And, and when you get sound, you, you're you able to control the um, better than static to matter. You'll be able to control the matter statically without using static by using sound. I know it kind of sounds weird, but let's go ahead and start this thing up. And I think we're all good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in. And it's plugged in. And let's, we're going to start turning the potentiometer all the way left. All the way to the left. And we're just going to give it a little start. We'll watch the speed. Let it increase. And let's see what this, let's see what this little machine. Let's start it slow. Can hear it. Can you guys hear it? <clears throat> All right, so you guys can hear it. Let's let the speed kind of balance itself out. Then we'll go to the potentiometer and we'll get some gains out of it. All right, so we're going to go to potentiometer. 
Um, so also this light, if you can see it, it's faintly on, faintly on. Now watch as I turn the potentiometer up. It'll get a little brighter. I'm just going up a little bit at a time. Let's see what gains we get. Hello, Tyler in the house. Chat with your bro hams, they'll tune you in. Uh, Vinny's my dog. Roy is my first name. Vinny St. Vincent's picture of my Doberman. So you can still, we're still climbing, and I just went up a little potentiometer. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's get back to the light. You see the light, how it's a little brighter? Now let's go up with the potentiometer a little more. You see how bright the lights get a little brighter. Let's step back. And you can hear that picking up. So let's go back to the potentiometer now. I'm probably halfway. And you can see the light right now, right? So now we can start using the light. Light's getting brighter. Odometer's climbing. The tachometer. If anybody wants to make this out there and wants a schematic or anything, just let me know. I'd be glad to pop a video up. All right, so you can see the light. And we, we're not even covering that. Right now, we're charging this battery, by the way. We're not just using power, we're gaining power back. I probably should stick a voltmeter on that. So we'll put this voltmeter on. charging this battery we're taking the back EMF and we're charging this battery and the back EMF is coming up the bifiler that coil and we're humming you can hear this thing whizzing right you know what else I hear whizzing You hear that? Give me thumbs up. You guys hear that?
Guys, hear that? Is that affirmative? Let's go over to the Pizio. But let's go ahead and change the wires and see if we hear any difference. So right now I'm changing the going from thick wire to thin wire. Alright, listen. So I don't hear a difference only because this is a, a mid-range to a bass speaker. Let's go over to a treble, this Pizio electric treble. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you guys hear the PZO electric? Can you hear that? I don't think so. Listen, I got nothing hooked up to this. Can you hear that? Do you hear that? That's coming from this speaker. Nothing hooked up. Just because it has a PZO crystal. You hear that, Tyler? Let's take a walk. Put my ear to it. No, but I'm I'm interested in bringing ground, using ground, a capacitor like this right here. If I could have a variable capacitor to this and a little antenna, I'm pretty sure I could walk around with this frequency. And understand this, there's no antenna here. What we have is, a, uh, is the fact that these magnets are creating a wave at a frequency. I don't hear it there.
it's hard because the wheel is making sound and this is faint so i got to expand on that and study that but with the pzo crystal it's like it's like rattling the cage to the crystal now let's go ahead and Very faint, yeah. Let's go ahead and step this up a little bit, get the potentiometer going a little bit more. So we're using this light as a gauge. Look at the speed, we're starting increasing the speed. You can see the light's getting brighter. Now this thing is picking up speed, listen to it. Well, Jason, what I know about the Pizio is that it, it is reacting to the, so it, it, it yes and, yes and no, I'm going to say yes to it's acting to the uh, electromagnetic, but in a sense, because the ether is acting to the electromagnetic. So piezo crystals uh, produce electricity when the ether is um, stretched. And what happens to the crystal itself, it reacts to the ether around it. So when the ether has a composition, not a composition, but a, a differential in the ether, like if an electromagnetic wave goes through it, or if some pressure change, the, electric, the piezo crystal will produce electric. So in the piezo electric producing there, it's also got a magnet in here with speaker wire. So it's making a electromagnetic wave is what we're hearing from sound. And that's how our sound, our ears uh, work with that. So um, it, it, the, the fact that these strong ass magnets are, are wailing through the air um, you know, there's other things going on here that I have, uh, learned, uh, in regards to the gyroscope. So we got this mass spinning. So the distance from this axle to the outer rim of the magnets with force going down let's do this this is going to be cool so with the gyroscope we are talking how fast are we going 3100 right. so with the gyroscope is how it works with the right hand rule just like electricity so we're turning this way right so the force is going down so if the force is going down we are Putting the fingers down, so that's where the force is going. And I'm going to take my hand and put it in the axial position because the axial position is where the torque is. Okay? So the torque is here, and the torque's on the other end. On both sides of the axis is the torque. Now, the faster the force going down, the greater the uh, angular momentum. So the angular momentum right here, as we go faster, is acting like a cone right now. It's it's growing outward and getting bigger and bigger. We're we're literally we're li literally and literally expanding our electromagnetic field because we're taking these magnets and we're spinning them fast, and we're we're now making a cone out of it. And this is. Very interesting to me because you see the other big, big papa wheel there. Um, I have uh, one more. 
of the um, what do you mean something cut out can you guys hear me Let's stop the electromagnetic field and see. Electromagnetic field and see. See if we get the get the ether to calm down around here. Can you guys hear me? Can you see good? Breaker breaker one nine. All right, so what I was saying is, if I had another wheel, same diameter, same size magnets, and a foot away, and have, and then it, it cones out and gets bigger and expands outwardly. So if that was to, to be happening, we spin the wheel, if you had a wheel next to it spin the opposite way, you would be crunching this electromagnetic together in between the wheels. I'm very interested to see what happens in the ether there and kind of do tests around there. So part two of this video will be uh, me having the identical wheel next to it. Wow, why am I getting cut out? So as the wheel is spinning, <laughs> so the the two wheels will be spinning the opposite direction they will be forcing uh ethereal pressure electromagnetic pressure so um around those two spinning the opposite way i like to see what happens with the ether around us and where i'm at making the video let's go ahead and um get this so here we are the battery is charged up to 13.12 it was a dead battery let's go ahead and switch that battery out let's look for a get a battery that it's probably 11 and change volts we'll check it right now charge battery all right so not bad this one says 12.57 um, all right let's fire up the system and we'll leave the potentiometer right where she sits and let's go ahead everything is on let's just give it a little touch watch the rpms climb let's pull our pzo over and see if we can hear it
So this, uh, this time I'm going to add some resistance into the um, EZO speaker. I'm going to check this first. For toroid, ferrite core. Obviously not a lot of wire on it, so it may not be good for this. It's probably more like an RF choke for AC. And uh, so, I'm going to set up a coil. It's amazing how how the air around you is responsive. You guys see that? All right, so now I'm going to hook up the speaker to it. I'm hooking up the speaker to the other two wires on there. Let's hook it to the P0 electric speaker. Just as I thought, add a little electronics and you get better results. So, oh, of course I could have had longer wire. See the light flashing. You guys hear that? Now I'm going to change over to the other wires, the fatter ones. You can see the light.
So we're at 3,000. Obviously, we put resistance on it. You can see the speed going up. And I didn't touch anything. Let's let the uh, let's let that tack go up. Charging over here, we're at now 12.92, and we should see it climb. There it is. Get ready to climb up to nine point or twelve point nine three. So we're taking the other half of the energy that's going into the prime mover, and we're which is the negative side, and what we're doing is we're throwing it into the battery. And we're charging that battery as well. So we're conserving here. All right, let's go ahead and go to the potentiometer. And let's go up a little bit. Now keep an eye on that light. Light just got a little brighter. You can see well, we're already jumping up. The speed goes up. So does the voltmeter. 9.3 to 9. Point, or 12.94 odometer see how bright the light is now and as I went up now you can see the volts climbing in the charging battery it's already up to 12.96 to 9.7. That's because I changed the potentiometer. So you see that is affecting that. That's a whole another enchilada in itself of tuning. Let's go up a little higher with the bulb. Look how bright that's getting. I don't see the speed climbing anymore. You can see the volts kicking up on the voltmeter there for that battery. I mean, we're at 9.2 to going on 9.3, and you can see how slow it's moving. Now it's increasing when we turn that potentiometer, and we're gathering more back EMF by that potentiometer. Look at that. Take a poise there. Change in the thirteen. There you go, going up to thirteen volts in that battery already. Speed hasn't increased anymore. All right, potentiometer is all the way up. Now let's go ahead and turn the potentiometer all the way down. So um, this right here, let's uh, let's let it get to 13.1. Let's see if we if it'll drop below 13 once we turn the potentiometer down. Sitting at 13 right now. Let's get it to solid one and we'll start turning the potentiometer. You see the light, so it will get it down. It makes a great gauge on. So, potentiometer is far right as it could go. Speed's maintaining at. Well, I don't know what just happened. Oh. Oh. That's not good. My tape gave out. 
to my little meter reader. It's back. Alright, so now we're just clipping up to 131. Let's that let's let this get to 13 one solid. All right, well, let's give this a couple more seconds. It'll be a 13-1 solid. Then we're going to turn that potentiometer all the way down to the left. There we go. Now let's go on a 1 to 2. All right, so let's... Uh, we're gonna watch a couple things here. You gotta watch the voltmeter. You guys can see the voltmeter, right? And you can see the potentiometer right there. The voltmeter right there. You guys see that? Can you see the voltmeter? Yeah, let me, let me somehow, let me see what I can do here. I can't be holding it, so. Let me get some of my Gorilla tape. There's nothing this stuff doesn't hold. Let's get it to where you can see it. Bingo was his name. Oh, uh -oh. what just happened? Used it. Turn back on. All right. So you see voltmeter good, right? All right, good. And then you see the potentiometer. You also see the light. All right, as the potentiometer goes down, the light will go down to almost not on. You can even see the wheel. So we're going to go ahead, and you can see the, the tachometer, right? Can you see the tach? Yeah. Turn it all the way down. Next time I put this setup out to you guys, I'll have a, a current reading meter on what the prime mover is using for, for power in, okay? So this way we can see power in, we can see power out, and let's we'll get out of the charge in the battery, and we're going to put a load on this. Because on one of my other experiments, the second I put the load on here, this wire here, that was connected to it uh, burned up. So that means it couldn't handle the current. So what I want to do is put thicker wire there. And I also want to figure out where the current's coming from. So that'll be a good search and destroy kind of thing. Because if this put the charging back EMF could, could have some different type of radiant attribute about itself. Does that make sense to you guys? I 
And I like to incorporate some ground with that back EMF wire. Well, Jason, what, what I kind of mean is this, is that that current, see, power in, power out. So that current that was increased in the back EMF came from where? Is it reacting in the coil here as a satchable reactor? where it's going to put a bigger load on the prime mover? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the prime mover and the coil in relationship to the prime mover is set. It's set. The coil determines the current. The current is set. So the back EMF off of that driving prime, prime mover coil, the thicker coil, should be set on what it gives as a back EMF based on what it puts out as a driver. So if I put a load on here and there's a lot of current, I got to see if that current is what it's supposed to be because the allowance of the current that I designed that coil to be should be maxed coming back out. Now from there, I was thinking about if there's more current, where's that current coming from? And it'll be good to investigate that on a back EMF. For instance, current in or power in, power out. So that means, could we cheat it? Nope, we can't cheat it. Uh, what if we put a, um, a quad filer coil to where one is the prime mover and three of them are back EMF? Well, now, it ain't no different than having an extension cord and three plugs plug in into it. Right, you guys? Because basically the power going in that cord is still being used in the, in the load coming out of that cord, like an extension cord. But where it gets interesting to me is that that back EMF could be used in relationship to ground and some type of capacitance and some type of antenna to where we're using electrostatics from the air, we're using uh, ground supply um, from the, the separation of the capacitor plates. So one plate would be tied to ground, the other plate's tied to the antenna up in the air and in that capacitor, and you tap into that and, and thanks, Adam. And, and then from there, to that capacitor, we hook up a variable, um, a variable uh, um, tuning capacitor, first of all, that it's tuned to. So you have to tune one, the ground, to the antenna. And once you have those tuned together, I think that's where we can pick up the Schumann residence and, and somehow figure out exactly where we're at in the wave itself and get the wave profile. So that's why I think the whole key here is, is digging deeper into the wave profile of the Schumann residence. Like actually hooking up, put an antenna up, uh, put a grounding rod down, put a variable capacitor in there, and also put a regular capacitor in there so you have uh, a plate of the ground and plate of the air and then a variable coming off of that so you can dial it in and then an oscilloscope so we can see the wave and see what we're getting so i think that's what we need to do uh, i just talking this out with you guys right now as i'm thinking in my head what do i need to do to pursue this uh, a little further. So um, here we are. We're down to 2816 RPMs. Um, the volts on the charging capacity or charging battery is at 12.97, staying strong. And uh, you can see that the light over here is very, very dim. It's on, but very, very dim. Now we'll go ahead and turn it all the way up and watch all three. Okay, light went on full. You can see the volts are going into the charging capacitor.
Jump on it, Jason. That's why I put it out there. Um, lights on, bolts are climbing, speed's going up. It's going a lot faster. Well, you guys know, any of you guys do any ham radio or any electronics, that you first got to tune in and dial in the ground, your circuitry, your coils. And obviously, if you're going to go up in the air, you're going to have to pick a wavelength. So what you do is in ham radio, they'll have um, a tank circuit with an oscillating oscillator all right you guys know what i'm talking about so you have a tank circuit you have an oscillator you have a capacitor one leg is hooked up to the ground rod one leg is hooked up to the antenna you'd have to have a coil which is a a it could be a um a third or a quarter or a half or a full wave which is uh, uh three meters right I think three meters no three meters is I think I think a full wave is something like 300 and something feet so anyway I have to break out the chart it's been a while since I looked at it um, well they're your components you got basically a radio there that's why I said we'll get into Ed Leeds Gallon's bottles his windings around the bottles, which ones are resistors, which ones are tuning, right? Might as well go back what he had because everybody's got bottles at their house. Everybody's got uh, magnetic wire. And what we'll do is we'll take a bottle. Let me grab something I got. We'll take, we'll do it at least gallon style. We'll take a bottle. And he's got them broken out in the bottom with a little electromagnetic uh, breaker point in the bottom. And he's got the wire coming out of the top, comes out to the bottom, and one's to the other. So we'll wrap the bottle with wire. We'll have the wire along here. And I, have to, I have to do some research into what we need to do here. But we'll, we'll sand down the length of the wire. And then we'll put another wire from off another bottle, perpendicular from, from the coils. And what we'll do is we'll search until we tap and the oscilloscope will show us. This is pretty cool, I guess. The oscilloscope will show us the wave as we move up and down the bottles. So, how we hook all this up and stuff, I'm going to have to wrap my head around it but to me it brings in sound it brings in electromagnetic wave it brings in electrostatics from the ground and it's exciting that is exciting stuff so our charging batteries up to 13.05 potentiometers all the way up we're at 1,538 to 1,540 RPMs. And we also, we have sound. Look at this. I'm holding this in my hand, right? Listen to this. Look, I'm not touching up. I'm in the air. You guys hear that?
That's a sound of progress, my brohams. Wireless Pizio. Look at that. Electromagnetic, picking it up. And it is, doesn't matter by the angle. Electromagnetic antenna. But the Pizio crystal in there is creating the sound electromagnetically. So we're taking electromagnetic into the core. We're breaking it out into the coil, going through the LED, coming out of that coil. And we're going into a PZO electric crystal into a speaker. You even see the LED lighting up. Cool stuff, guys. Feel the temperature of the coil. Wow, nothing. Cold. It's unplugged. The whole table's shaking. Let's see everything drop. to get into a cool section right now for you guys um, this really hit me hard last night um, and what I'm about ready to get into is just exciting as wireless it falls in line with some things like weights and measures I know, I know. Luckily, I got ADD. So I'm able to <clears throat> bounce around. All right, let me look for what I'm looking for. Now, this topic here is, I want you guys, I want to see your comments bounce up. Because this is fascinating. And this is where we get into Newton. And in one of his laws about everything is elliptical. And you can see right now we have a fine balance around this whole wheel. They're, they're all spaced out evenly. There's a great balance to this wheel. And the only thing it has now for induction <clears throat> is it has this little um, pickup here for the tachometer. And then also it has the coil core. So you can see it's reacting to that. Let's go ahead and take a weight, and we're going to stick a weight to it, all right? Now we're going to get into what if we make something obliptical? What, what results is obliptical with sort of a load because the reaction to this iron core is going to have a counterbalance to the weight I just put on. So let's 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 teeter it.
All right, so I think we need to go a little bit bigger in weight. Big chunk of iron. Almost looks like a paddle, right? All right, I, I know what I have to do. This iron core is just a little too much. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it off. If I can do it without the magnet taking it from me. Voila! Let's get back to the experiment now. Alright, so we're going to take these off. That induction was just too much. Let's get back to just having this one bar. And we're going to attach it to right there. There's still a little induction going on in here, but not much. But I want you to watch how it reacts. This is elliptical now. So basically what we're doing is we're stretching out the circumference of the diameter. Is that not cool? Just by, I, I don't know if things are supposed to be perfectly circle. I, I think, I think man, I like Walter Russell. I, I think man has made the circle in the sense that everything is ob, 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 ob like ob, it's ob shaped. Now we'll go to stretch it out a little bit. So what if now we go with a bigger mass? So what you're looking at, the difference between this and the other one is one, the distance between the axial and the outer rim now, the outer rim has changed. Get that away from it, nothing but interfering. Increase the mass. All right, let's let's see if we can put it on now, not long ways, sideways. 
And let's see if I can get it to go through the bite. No. I apologize. My power went out on my phone. Anybody there? Thank you, Adam. Sorry about that. My power, my phone went dead. So one more thing I wanted to cover before I sign off was let's go ahead and unbalance the wheel. And we're going to put this piece of iron on there. And it's thin enough to go through the bike. All right. Then you know. So this is the wheel turning by unbalancing the wheel to make it all elliptical. And you can see there's a slight induction over here. You can actually stop that thing on the top. So what advantage would you have if you unbalanced? I would say this. If you were an axle and you had a rope that was 10 feet long and you had a person tied to it, and you started turning and turning and turning until their feet were off the ground and you were spinning them. At some point, you as an axle will be pulled out of your particular place where you started, right? Does that make sense? You'll be pulled out of your, wherever you started your axial process you would be pulled from that and I think that's why things get ob, 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 obstacle or uh, uh, obelisk or obstacle yep yep you can say that on a compost Baylor. Interested in stuff. You guys have a great weekend. Happy Father's Day to everybody who's a father. And uh, peace out. Hopefully we covered some good stuff. Leave your comments. Without the wave.
crazy how it just turns on its own. Well, from my force. And look at the battery that we started is still holding the pressure at 12.74. And going to 73, it's dropping a little bit, you know, but it definitely charged more than it was when we first put it on. Still turning. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Didn't take much to get that thing going, did it? You're welcome.
It's a big ass wobble. So I just noticed that it was spinning the wrong way. See if I can take some of that shake out. I guess putting those weights on them kind of offset them a little bit. They're making the water. Yeah. Yeah. So I tightened the bearings too much. So I should show you a difference. So that was a high of 2,800 RPMs.
See the speed go down? Put the load on there. Power in, power out. You're not going to steal anything from there. Slow down the wheel. Pull more current from the prime mover. Let's take a look and see what happens to the charging battery. So we're at 1306 going 1307. Let's see if it increases now. So when I put the load over here, it'll slow the RPMs down. And it would be nice if it increased the amount going into, where are we at, 1306? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So it drops the voltage in the battery? Hard for me to see it. Drops the voltage going in. So the speed of the wheel in reference to the charging battery are, are lined up together. You guys got that? So that wheel slows down. So does the amount going in there. You would think that I slowed that wheel down, but I, put, I pulled more current. So that's why I gotta get a current meter hooked in. Pyramid cone. All right, but I don't really have one right now.
I'm back. Let's increase the voltage over here to the battery. I mean, decrease the voltage. Yep. Technical difficulties. Guys, ready for some fun? Who do I got on here? This is some bismuth. Let's go ahead and melt some bismuth. I'm going to put it inside here. A little crucible. Yep, yeah. we're going to come over here, and we're going to put this inside here. We're going to melt that bismuth.
Uh oh. That didn't go over too well. All right, first starters right now, we're melting the bismuth in here. And go ahead and give it a check to see if it is melting in there. We're just gonna stick this in here and my screwdrivers should be getting bright red. Amazing. How a frequency will go ahead and melt metal. Oh, yeah, she's hot. See the smoke? Not hot. Smoking. Woo! Smoking. Wow, very hot. All right, so what should that be on? That should be on something different. Let's call not even hot. Let's pull this out. Wow, is that crazy hot? That is crazy hot. Now we're gonna keep that in there because that's that's about ready to melt some bismuth. Where's the lid to it though? That looks like it's hot. Where'd that lid go? That's something on fire. Hmm. may have too many turns of coils of windings here for what I'm trying to do. Oh, but it's hot.
Here's Mrs. Melton. Melton Bismuth. See the liquid showing up. Look at that. See a liquid? That's bismuth. First time I ever melted it electronically. This is cool. Usually I use a frying pan. Now you're gonna ask me, right? Why am I melting bismuth? Because I want to coat something. more in there. Wait till you see what I'm going to be coating. I'm going to coat some copper. A bunch of bismuth I got in here. I wanted to coat a little copper. I want to coat a little iron. You guys know what about bismuth? Anybody know about bismuth? Why it's so special? What do you know about bismuth? Leave your comments. Well, what I know about bismuth is that it's, it's a conductor. I learned that through my experiments. I also learned that it's non-magnetic. And that it is 30, de 30 degrees off, I believe. From a magnet. Oh hell, a piece of wood's burning. 
Look at that. It all melted. Let's get some big stuff in there. Yeah, all that, that put in there and melted. Melton Bismuth with electric. All right, let's get that. Let's get that crucible out of there. Ooh. I don't know what I do with a piece of iron, I guess. Put it right there in that iron. Not even hot. A little warm, not hot. What I did at the bottom. The burn mark. Now, I want to take a piece of iron wire. This is a piece of iron wire that I have that's coated. Hardened up that quick, huh? This stuff is beautiful. Bismuth on iron. I guess I'm gonna have to plan this one out and coat it. Do the same thing with some copper. So obviously, I burned that out. Time to say peace out. Happy Friday. Happy Father's Day. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. One hour, 36 minutes of your time.